Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. Good Wednesday afternoon. I'm local forecaster Brandon Rue looking at things warming up and eventually getting into some rain. We'll have the complete forecast coming up. I'm Nick Monticelli inside of Cobo Hall. Free medical, free dental, free vision, free legal counsel. The list continues. All the services that Metro Detroit residents can get and how long they can get them for. And as tensions rise, North Korea says it's considering a strike on a U.S. territory. But first at noon, we want to get to breaking news coming from Alexandria, Virginia. That's where FBI agents raided the home of former Trump campaign manager, Chairman Paul Manafort. Agents appeared at Manafort's home without advance warning in the early hours back on July 26. Now, the raid is related to the investigation into Russia's interference in the 2016 presidential election. The search warrant indicates investigators might have argued to a federal judge they have reason to believe Manafort could not be trusted to turn over all records in response to a grand jury subpoena. We'll have more on this story as it develops. Also developing now, North Korea saying its leader, Kim Jong Un is weighing whether to strike the U.S. Pacific territory of Guam or not. The threat comes just hours after President Trump vowed to meet threats made by North Korea with fire and fury like the world has never seen. NBC's Bill Neely reports from Seoul, South Korea. Yes, hello from Seoul, which has every right to be the most nervous capital city in the world right now because it would be the first casualty in any war mixed messages coming from Washington that will confuse the allies here in South Korea and in Japan because from Secretary of State Rex Tillerson last week we heard words that China called courageous when he said we don't seek regime change in Pyongyang we don't seek to send our forces north of the 38th parallel and we have no interest in war and yet from President Trump quite different words. So I think the president what the president was doing is sending a strong message to North Korea in language that Kim Jong-un would understand. The more optimistic analysts here in Seoul would say that Kim Jong-un, in fact, is very predictable and that survival is what he cares about most of all. And like I say, they have been used to this fiery rhetoric for a very, very long time. Well, here in Seoul, they went from real satisfaction a few days ago at a new UN resolution giving much tougher sanctions onto North Korea and a show of unanimity at the ASEAN conference. They've gone from that sense of satisfaction to a sense of real anxiety here. They don't like to hear this fiery rhetoric. They, don't, uh, they understand that when it comes from Pyongyang. But from Washington, that's a completely different matter. Back to you. Thank you, Bill. Now we want to get to a story that's developing out of France. Police shoot and arrest a man suspected of slamming a BMW into soldiers in a Paris suburb, injuring six of them. The attacker and soldiers are now in the hospital. The driver's motive unclear at this hour, but officials said that he deliberately aimed that vehicle at the soldiers. Counterterrorism authorities have opened an investigation. Today's attack was the latest of several targeting security forces guarding France. New at noon and here a little closer to home, a former Harper Woods police officer is charged with larceny along with other crimes. It's alleged that 37 year old Michael Lynch stole various items from the Harper Woods Police Department property room. Lynch is being charged with misconduct in office, six counts of larceny in a building and one count of possession of heroin. He's expected to be arraigned in just a little bit at 1:30 today. Well, this afternoon, a 20 year old East Point man will appear before a judge in connection to a deadly shooting at a Roseville graduation party. The shooting happened early Sunday, killing that boy, 18 year old Luke Fillery in Clinton Township. The suspect is set to be arraigned at 130. Well, right now, investigators are working to find out what caused a house fire in Lyon Township. That fire started earlier this morning, and as you can see, that it destroyed this home. This morning, Sky 4 was over the scene. It's right there on Douglas near 10 Mile. Firefighters were even still working to put out hot spots. You can even see some flames there on your screen. Authorities think that there was some sort of explosion that went on inside of that home, but thankfully no one was hurt. Well, it is another picture perfect day. A warm start to your Wednesday afternoon. Let's get right on over to meteorologist Brandon Rue. Beautiful look at the Detroit skyline there as well. 
but I do understand we've got a, a little worry a little later this week. Yeah, and Friday is going to be our best chance. So we're throwing it out there now because of planning on watering and not watering Friday. Really our most solid chance over the next maybe seven to 10 days. Kind of depressing, but we could use the rain today. It's not in the offing 80 degrees at Metro 80 in Ann Arbor near 80 up in Lapeer. It's 81 port here on Mount Clemens. Good afternoon to you. 82 degrees, 79 down in Monroe and temperatures all across southeastern lower and southern Ontario. This is comparing yesterday's noon to today. The plus means we are about two to five degrees warmer than we were yesterday. So on our way again into the middle 80s and yes, going to have to do a little lawn watering if you're keeping up 85 the afternoon high temperature. We do have some high clouds and mid level clouds mixing in just not wanting to to leak on us, but eventually we do get into some rain. Evrod, we talked about Friday and the weekend coming up. Sounds good, Brandon. Thank you. Turning now to decision 2017. Let's take a look at some of the notable election results from the primary yesterday in the Detroit mayoral race. It'll be Mike Duggan versus Coleman Young, the second facing off in the general election while in the Detroit City Council District two race. Current Councilman George Cushingberry was defeated, leaving Roy McAllister Jr. and former state Senator Virgil Smith to face off come November. In the city clerk race, current clerk Janice Winfrey will have a chance at a fourth term facing off against Garland Gilchrist the second. We've got everything that you need to know for the complete results from all the races. Head on over to our website. That is clickondetroit.com. A little later today, now a lawsuit will be filed against Ford Motor Company. More than 100 Livonia homeowners are suing the automaker. Neighbors worry that chemicals that were used decades ago are now leaking underground and getting into under their homes. The neighborhood has been marked as contaminated, which means property values are taking a quick nosedive. The suit is set to be filed today at the Wayne County Circuit Court. Well, thousands of people will pack Cobo Center over the next couple of days for the Motor City Medical Mission. And as our Nick Monticelli reports, the free medical care clinic runs through Friday and will help anyone in need regardless of insurance. Good afternoon. They have thousands of volunteers here inside of Cobo Hall to make all of this happen. The Motor City Medical Mission. So you look around and you can see what they've got going on on this side. This is the busiest side dental. They've got free dental. Hey, it's OK, Doc. <laughs> they've got a lot of things going on today. A lot of patients they're trying to see, but this isn't all they're doing. So you've got dental over on this side. You've got x-rays going on over there. And then we keep talking about things that are outside of it. Let's show you some video. They've got medical exams. They've got clothing. They've got uh, legal assistance. So many things. The best part is, is that all of this is absolutely free. free to any Metro Detroit residents, and they're not asking any questions. If you're rich, if you're poor, if you have insurance, if you don't have insurance, it does not matter. They are going to help you out today. And what's really impressive is that when you hear about events like this, you kind of hear about the normal stuff. Again, medical, vision, dental. There are a lot of services that, frankly, they've got that you probably wouldn't even fathom they're offering. They'll be able to get free legal um, consultations. Uh, there's clothing uh, that they'll be able to avail themselves to, um, massages, haircuts. Uh, we have a lot of surprises for everyone. I'm telling you, we're going to take very good care of our Detroit residents. I think it's amazing. I love to see things like this in the city, you know, helping people who we know are impacted by not having insurance and being uninsured. So I think it's amazing. So here's the information because this mission is going on for two more days. They open the doors at 6 a.m. They're going until 5 o'clock tonight. They're also going to do the same thing tomorrow, opening the doors at 6, going until 5. On Friday, they're staying here until noon. And here's the best part. You see all these people in line here there's still empty chairs everywhere so they are still looking for patients if you need help they are going to help you and even on top of that if they get too many people they're going to connect you with a clinic and a doctor a physician dentist whatever you need to take care of you outside of this three-day event we're here at Kobo Nick Monticelli local four all righty Nick thank you for the update there so to come right here on local four news at noon drivers stuck in floodwaters Get some unexpected help. There's a new video that shows a monster truck getting involved in the rescue effort. Plus, a massive construction crane topples in the middle of a neighborhood. We'll tell you why neighbors say they knew it was only a matter of time before this accident even happened. But first, the DJ in the center of the Taylor Swift groping trial pleads his innocence. We've got details on what happened in court next. During Wall Street. 
Welcome back. Taylor Swift is expected to testify soon against a radio DJ. She says sexually assaulted her during a 2013 photo shoot. The man is suing the pop star, saying that he was fired from his job because of Taylor Swift. And however, he's denying any inappropriate behavior. Joe Fire reports from Denver, Colorado. David Mueller on the stand for more than three hours detailed his version of events from a 2013 meet and greet, testifying as music superstar Taylor Swift looked on in the courtroom. At issue, what happened when Swift, Mueller, and Mueller's girlfriend at the time posed for this photo, which was shown to jurors Tuesday. Mueller testified that as he moved to get into the picture, his hand was closed and came into contact with part of her body. I felt what appeared or seemed to be a rib cage or rib or ribs. Mueller described it as jostling, adding, our hands touched and our arms touched, but he said he never lifted her skirt or grabbed her behind, as Swift has alleged. His lawyer argued the photo supports Mueller because Swift's skirt is not visibly ruffled or rumpled. The pop star never reported the incident to police, but one of her reps told Mueller's station KYGO Radio, and two days later, Mueller was fired. He sued Swift and members of her team in 2015, saying the groping allegation cost him a job that pays more than $150,000 a year. On the stand Tuesday, Mueller said, it's a horrible thing I'm accused of and I want to clear my name. Swift countersued claiming assault and battery. In court, the pop star could be seen writing notes to her attorney, and at one point, Swift's mother and co-defendant Andrea broke down in tears. During opening statements, their attorney, Doug Baldridge, asked jurors, what's wrong with this picture? A woman is assaulted, a woman reports it, and she gets sued? It just doesn't make sense. He said Swift is asking for $1 in damages, telling the jury she's not trying to bankrupt this man. She's trying to tell people out there you can say no when someone puts their hand on you. On the first day of testimony, spectators lined up at 4 a.m., hoping to get one of just 32 courtroom seats reserved for the public. Swift is expected to testify at some point during the trial. Joe Fryer, NBC News, Denver. And out of Northern California, where a home there was damaged after a crane toppled over and fell right onto its roof. This happened in Campbell on Tuesday around noon local time. Contractors were replacing a power pole with the crane suddenly toppling over. One neighbor was left puzzled by the move to use a crane that large for just one power pole. It was overextended, you know? You can only reach so far with the crane, and if the waves shifted the wrong way, it's gonna go down. And the unthinkable did happen. It took until late Tuesday night to remove that crane. Thankfully, no one was hurt. Well, floodwaters in Texas now are leaving cars stranded on roadways, and one man is rescuing them in a very unique way, to say the least. This monster truck towed a delivery truck along Interstate 45 in Houston on Tuesday. The disabled vehicle was stranded for hours and tow truck drivers couldn't get to him. So one man jumped into action using his friend's monster truck to help tow people. And like a true good Samaritan, the man didn't charge a dime for his services. New at noon. It can hold up to 20 guests and it's now one of the hottest rental properties on Airbnb. New at noon, we'll tell you what makes this New York home so unique, Brandon. 80 degrees here, one of the warmest on the map here across Detroit. But look at these 60s right now across parts of the High Plains, tracking a little change coming your way with rain and temperatures next. It can happen in an instant. Crashes where cars slam into buildings, hurting innocent bystanders inside stores and restaurants you visit. I'm Karen Drew. See the new test engineers are doing that could change how storefronts protect shoppers tonight at 11. All right, everybody, welcome back. Meteorologist Brandon Rue joining me now, and I'm going to give you an A-plus for the forecast over the past couple of days. All right. But I'm going to give you a C-minus for what you're going to talk about coming up in a little bit for Friday. Right. It, it's That's the, the mentality of a badish kind of a day on a Friday. That Nobody yeah. wants to hear that, but just think good thoughts about how your grass and your garden. No, I have... They're, 
in un underground sprinklers. Well, what about Bob T's garden here? The storm pin. He says an absolutely beautiful day to check on the garden in Madison Heights, our local four storm pins. We are not expecting anything crazy or severe on Friday, but the thought for storm pins is to share storm pictures and others for what could be coming your way. So it's a free app as we plug on here all the time under WDIV. So get that, share your beauty pics with us when the weather is a beauty. And it is 80 degrees, the humidity, just like yesterday, right around 40%. South wind is three, feels like 80, so the humidity isn't up too much. Tomorrow it'll be up just a little bit. And then Friday, here comes the rain, right? Today's high 85 with those lazy, hazy high clouds. Some neighborhoods maybe not quite getting into the middle 80s, but there will be some that maybe check out at about 87, 88 later this afternoon. So we've hedged it right in the middle, middle 80s. 62 overnight, boating today, pool today, whatever you have going on outside, absolutely safe and ideal. Don't forget the sunscreen and the life jackets if you're doing some boating, but southwest, uh, five to 10 knots today, really manageable out there on the big lakes. Small lakes are even better off, right? So we see some high clouds, nothing tremendous. Before the break, we showed you the big temperature swing across the high plains or on the west side of the Great Lakes. And we have this looming stationary front that eventually it's gonna take another day or so before it moves across the area and it will bring some rain chances for us. So tomorrow looks a lot like today. Not a whole lot going on, streaming in some high clouds, just enough moisture in the atmosphere for that. But we increase that as we head into Friday. Here's Thursday afternoon, 3 p.m. Some of these light green blobs here, not much to worry about, not thinking that's going to hit the ground. But on Friday morning, round one of the showers, probably over with by the time a lot of you wake up. But round two in the afternoon, again, not predicting severe weather on Friday, but a much needed rain. Hopefully by the mid to late afternoon, things calm down. So your Friday uh, evening plans aren't disrupted, and I don't think they will be. The models are calling for a random shower over the weekend, but I think most of it's dry, may not amount to a whole lot. So we're not talking much about it, Everett. All righty, Brandon, thank you. So are you planning a trip to New York and wondering where you should stay? Well, there is a unique spot, a new spot to hang out and hang your hat in Queens through Airbnb. It's the childhood home of President Donald Trump. The home was built by the president's father. It has five bedrooms and three and a half bathrooms, and it can hold up to 20 guests. It has rooms for conferences or even meetings. A night at the President Trump childhood home will set you back just over well, $700. How about that? Still ahead, a Florida man gets a big surprise when he cleans his attic. We'll tell you what he found that had been living there for years. Here's a hint. All right, lastly, here at noon, a Florida homeowner says that he was fed up with a pest that had been making noise in his attic. He expected mice to be the cause of the sounds, but he was shocked to find out the pest was a boa constrictor. Mm, mm, mm. Apparently, the six foot long snake Woo! had been living in the attic for at a least snake. a couple of years, probably eating those mice. Yeah, the homeowner says that it had been bunking in a space right above his room. No, no, mm -hmm. no, uh uh. They called a snake handler in to remove it. The family believes the boa was once someone's pet before eventually slithering over to their home. I I would honestly call Quick and Loans and see if we can transfer the deed into the snake's oh. home. <laughs> like, just give it to him. And bounce on out of there. No, no sorry. All right. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow.